Has Indiana basketball become an NBA pipeline? You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in. It is the Locked On Hoosiers podcast. I'm your man, Jacob Goins. I appreciate you being here making this your first listen each and every day. We are a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, which is your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Hoosiers is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Well, thank you so much for making Locked On Hoosiers your first listen each and every day. Thank you so much for being here. Shout out to all of my everydayers, those of you that stick through and uh, are here every single day. So thank you so much. You're the ones that make this show so successful. If you're new here, welcome to the show. Welcome to the program. We're having a lot of fun over here. And today, the question has become, for me anyway, has Indiana basketball become an NBA pipeline? And the real question is, Can they carry that on, right? You've seen guys get put into the league the last few years, the latest being Khalil Ware to the Miami Heat as an NBA lottery pick. And you've already got some news outlets that are predicting a couple of guys for Indiana to go early in the first round next year in the NBA draft. And so we've seen guys go to the league forever, for decades from Indiana that have gone on to have great careers. But in this new era of Mike Woodson basketball, as he's just now really getting his career off the ground here in Bloomington in particular, could this be a longevity NBA pipeline? Can recruits come here knowing they are going to go and play pro basketball? It's something that I think the Hoosiers have to really push in on and something that I think maybe you, the fan, can kind of help out with that. And I think support that. And and a lot of it goes into, okay, when guys get to the league from Indiana, you have to look at it a few ways, right? Are they prepared? Are they ready to go? Can they compete? And do they last a long time in the NBA? And sure, you've got young guys in there right now, like Trace Jackson Davis and, and Jayla Hushafino. And, and now you've got Khalil Ware, who they're all still young. And they're in their young and very, very raw stages of their NBA careers. And so we don't quite know what that's going to look like in terms of Indiana players under this coach, under this coaching staff, and whether they are actually built to play long-term NBA basketball. And that's nothing against Mike Woodson or this staff or even the back end of a previous staff. It's just something that you have to figure out. We just don't know the answer to that question yet. I think they're going to be good, not just fine. I think they're going to be good players that come out of Bloomington and go play in the National Basketball Association. I just believe that. I think Khalil Ware is going to have a fantastic career. Will he be the greatest center of all time? I mean, odds are no, but I think he can be a really good player, and I think he can find his home and be an impactful draftee. Same thing with the guys I mentioned just a second ago. I think you've seen them be impactful early on, and they will continue to be impactful moving forward. And the reason I bring this question up is because according to CBS Sports, you've already got two guys on the current NBA ro- or on the current Indiana roster that are being projected as first round picks in the 2025 NBA draft. Two of those guys are Cannon Carlisle, the sophomore guard who transferred in. He is projected, and this is according to CBS Sports, okay, being projected number 19 overall to the Oklahoma City Thunder, while Mackenzie Mbaco coming off a up-and-down freshman season, one that ended on the up versus starting on the down. He is projected as the number 22 overall pick to the New Orleans Pelicans. So two guys that are going to be in your starting five that are projected in the first round. Now, I'm going to talk about McKenzie and Baco. We'll talk about Cannon Carlisle. Also talk about who else I think could make a career in the NBA that's currently on the roster right now. McKenzie and Baco is one of those guys that if he continues to do this number right there, and for those of you on audio, it was trajecting upwards, which he was doing last season. Yeah, he can absolutely not just be an NBA player, not just be drafted to the NBA, but be a legitimate first round pick. And 
while I don't know the whole draft class for 2025 and what that's going to look like by the end of June next season, I do have a feeling that it's going to be a better class than what we saw just a couple of weeks ago, which, look, not trying to downgrade it, not trying to be that type of guy, but draft experts were saying it was one of the worst draft classes we've ever seen. And it is what it is. Khalil Ware was still drafted high. He was still a lottery pick, and you can't ever take that away from him, including all the other guys that got drafted. But I say that to say I think that next year's draft class is going to be a lot better than this year's draft class. So the fact that a guy like McKenzie Mbaco is already getting the love, already getting respect from draft experts and analysts from those as like CBS Sports, that should excite you. That should excite you, the fan, about what's to come and the possibilities for McKenzie and Baco this season. If he continues to shoot the ball well, we saw him do that at the end of last year, yeah, he can play in the NBA. If he can continue to handle the basketball and orchestrate the offense a little bit, yeah, he'll be in the NBA. If he can learn how to defend a little bit better and play to his size, which I think he's going to do, taking a leap as a freshman to now being a sophomore, yes, He can play in the NBA. Like, he has the build. I mean, just look at the guy. He's got what it takes to be a professional basketball player. He just needs to develop a little bit more. And, no, he wasn't your old-fashioned one-and-done Kentucky style. He needs a couple of years to breed and to kind of get better and to learn a few things. And this is where we find out. Right here, McKenzie and Baco is a perfect example and a perfect opportunity for Mike Woodson to truly prove he can take a raw high school kid, bring him in, who is already highly talented, highly rated, highly recruited, right? You bring in an extremely talented but raw player out of high school and develop them into what works in the NBA. Because, oh yeah, did we just forget that Mike Woodson used to coach in the NBA? That's what is intriguing about McKenzie and Baca, which is why I started with him, because this could be the one true time, or I guess one of the first true times, that Mike Woodson gets a guy straight out of high school, has him for a couple of years, makes him a really good player, and ships him off to be a pro. That's something you can sell and use for the rest of your time here if you're Mike Woodson. And I absolutely believe that McKenzie and Baco can be an NBA player, which allows me to go on and say, I think Indiana can and already is an NBA pipeline. And Mike Woodson has every opportunity in the world to continue to make it that, to continue putting guys year after year after year into the NBA. And I think McKenzie and Baco will be an example of that. I think Cannon Carlisle will be an example of that. And I want to talk more about Cannon Carlisle in particular and other guys that could get there as well. Have that for you coming up next in our next segment here on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers is brought to you by Game Time. Look, Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. And look, it's pure baseball season right now. It's early July, so go. If you're around a city or close to a city that you can get to a game, get on the Game Time app, make that last minute call, and just go to the game. I promise you will not be disappointed using the Game Time app. They have last-minute deals, flash deals, zone deals, and my favorite part of the whole thing, they have views from your seat. You can get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy, and you know exactly where you're sitting and what you'll see from that seat. It's my favorite part by far, and it's 100% accurate. I will personally tell you that. I've used it multiple times, and I've been impressed every single time. All right, take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back into Lockdown Hoosiers. I appreciate you being here. Again, shout out to all of my everydayers. You are the reason that this podcast is doing so well, all right? Those of you on YouTube, on audio, doesn't matter. I appreciate you being here 
each and every day. Reminder, we are in the off season, so going about three days a week, but with the craziness of last week, we're going to go every day again this week. So it'll be like old times and be like we're in season. But if you're on YouTube, be sure you like the video, comment down below your thoughts on who could be going to the NBA from this current roster, whether it be this next year or even two or three years from now, who do you think's NBA worthy? on this roster. Also, make sure you subscribe to our channel as well. That way you'll never miss a new episode of Locked on Hoosiers. And for those of you that listen to it on the audio version, do the same thing, all right? Be sure you follow, subscribe, do whatever you got to do. That way you never miss an episode of Locked on Hoosiers. Well, the two guys that were mentioned in uh, this CBS NBA draft projections, McKenzie and Baco and Cannon Carlisle. Now, McKenzie and Baco was projected 22 overall, and Cannon Carlisle is projected at 19 overall to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, I didn't say this in the first segment, and I probably should have. There's a long way to go, man. We are, what, 11 months, over 11 months away from the 2025 NBA draft. Do not take this and run with it until next June. Okay, things are going to change for good, for bad, for whatever. It doesn't matter. This will not be accurate by the time June, whatever it is, late June next year rolls around. But it's a good starting point. And I think you can look at a guy like Cannon Carlisle, who is just a sophomore, who I don't even know now. If he's projected as a first-round pick and by the time it rolls around for him to declare for the draft and he's still projected as a first-round pick, then yes, he will leave, he will go and go to the NBA. But the exciting thing is, for a guy like him, for a guy like Miles Rice, you have the opportunity to keep those types of players here for numerous seasons. And with NIL being what it is nowadays across just college athletics in general, you're seeing less players take that jump and take that risk and leave college too early. Now, will that happen at Indiana? I don't know. Our NIL is pretty solid, okay? We had a whole episode about it way back when, uh, and you guys loved it, because NIL is not a problem here. It's not. And that's a reason that Indiana's in with a lot of these big-time high school recruits, but they're also interested because of what the pipeline that Indiana has become sending guys to the NBA. Talked about McKenzie and Baco. Want to talk about Cannon Carlisle for a second because this is a guy that has a lot to prove. He's a transfer from out west. He's coming into Indiana. He's going to be a starting guard. He'll be in a position to be one of the guys on this team. And he's going to be playing in a system under Mike Woodson where guards have not been elite the last few seasons. I was going to say haven't been impressive or haven't been good or haven't been able to succeed, but I don't believe that. I still believe that Mike Woodson's system can be good for guards if it changes up a little bit. There's just going to be so much more talent on the floor this year that somebody like Cannon Carlisle can come in and just do what he wants to do, right? You've got your Miles Rice of the world who's going to orchestrate everything. You've got players like McKenzie and Baco who can stand in the corner and knock down threes or get to the basket and rebound and defend. You've got your big guys like Malik Renu and Umar Ballo, who both of those guys we're going to get to in just a second. So I feel like Ken and Carlisle can just have a little fun. Let's play some basketball this year, and he can show how elite of a guard he can truly be. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping this year, okay, that Miles Rice and Cannon Carlisle switch off and both of them rotate between the one and two guard position. I know you've got a few behind them. You've got um, you've got Trey Galloway sitting on the bench. I get that. I know, but I hope you get to see both guards play in both positions because. I think they can both do it. They've but they've done it before. They've done it at their previous schools in the Pac-12, which no longer exists, RIP. But you then would, I guess, allow yourself to move things around, play with different, different options and different combinations of players on the floor at the same time. Because early on, if you do that, and I'm sure they've been doing it in practice, I hope so, where – you're rotating Miles Rice and Cannon Carlisle, both of them playing point guard, both of them playing shooting guard, and that's going to allow Cannon Carlisle to really shoot up the draft boards because if he ends up going to the Oklahoma City Thunder, where they are projecting him to go right now, then they're going to have the same mentality of, hey, we can use him in both positions, and we can trust him in both positions. And I think Miles Rice can 
can do the same thing. I think both of these guards can be draft eligible. They're both going to have to be, get a little better shot from deep. They both got to learn how to defend a little bit too because, look, there's some big guards in the NBA, man. There's some big dudes out there that you have to be able to stop. I know that doesn't sound accurate for the NBA talking about defense, but when playoffs come around and late season comes around, yeah, they actually do care about defense, believe it or not. I know, I know. I don't believe it either until you see it, but it is there. You'll you'll see them ramp up the defense come, you know, come April when the playoffs start. And so for a guy like Rice and a guy like Carlisle, I think both of them could be draft eligible. I think both of them could be professional players. It seems like Miles Rice may take a little bit longer because, I mean, he's not being projected as a first-rounder right now. I'll be completely honest with you. Seeing Cannon Carlisle projected as a first-rounder right now kind of shocked me, kind of surprised me. But, hey, I love it. I'm excited. And that, as I said with McKenzie and Baco, that should get you excited, the fan, right, the watcher, the listener, whatever, you're, that should get you excited about what this guard room is going to be this season. And that should also excite you about all the guards that Indiana is recruiting. All right, you start putting a couple more of them in the league, man, you're really going to be in it for all the biggest guards in the country, not just in the state, not just one year, but for years and years to come. But who else on this roster could be NBA potential? Who could be NBA ready next season or even a year or two down the road? The obvious one that a lot of people are going to go to is Umar Ballo, right? Is Umar Ballo going to be NBA ready? Could be. He's obviously not quite there yet because he didn't go this year and he transferred in and he'll be he'll be one of the go-to guys for Indiana, but you just put a center in the league. You just had a center, a seven-footer, who Umar Ballo is too. You just had a seven-footer drafted to the NBA and in a lottery pick, a top 15 pick in the draft, okay? You have an opportunity for Umar Ballo to be back-to-back first-round centers. Will he go first round? I don't know. Probably not. But if he can develop a little bit of a more stronger game. That's the few things I've heard about him is sometimes he could be a little softer on the inside, get a little more muscle, right? Play to your size. I think that's what most of it comes down to. Then yeah, Umar Ballo can be an NBA player. He's seven foot tall. Come on, man. That's, that's, that's half the battle right there. You're seven foot tall. He somewhat develops a shot like Khalil Ware did down the stretch last season. Maybe Mike Woodson finds a way to implement that in the offense. Then, yeah, I think you could see Umar Ballo uh, become become one of those players. Um, And then, you know, you got some guys on the bench too, uh, your Luke Goodies of the world and things like that. One more guy that people are going to ask about is Malik Renu. Could Malik Renu be an NBA player? I think he could. I think he could, but it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for a guy that cannot shoot threes and, let's be honest, will not shoot threes. And his outside the perimeter ball handling, right, or even outside the paint ball handling isn't all there for a guy that gets in serious foul trouble. This is a big year for Malik Renew. This is a big year for a lot of guys on this roster who are trying to prove themselves and make it to the next level. Malik Renew came back because he wanted to prove himself. He wanted to show that he could get better again. The jump he took from two years ago to last year, he's trying to do that again from last year to this year. And will he be a first rounder? No, I don't think so. But I do think he could be a late round guy, somebody that a team is willing to take a chance on that they believe could be a developmental piece or even just a gamble and see what happens moving forward. So Indiana's got a lot of potential and they have so many options to keep this NBA pipeline alive. I can't wait to see how it goes. We got a long way until then. That's not until the end of June next season, next year in 2025. But the Hoosiers are going to have some guys drafted next year in the NBA draft. You can mark my words on that. And Mike Woodson and this entire staff should hang their hat on that. Well, coming up in our final segment on Locked on Hoosier, speaking of guys getting drafted, Mike Woodson had some thoughts about Khalil Ware getting drafted and also him getting drafted to the Miami Heat. Had some serious words and compliments for the Miami Heat organization and how Khalil Ware could fit into that system. We'll have that for you coming up next in our final segment on Locked on Hoosiers. 
Final segment here on Locked on Hoosiers. Again, appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day, and I appreciate you making that so well. We had a whole episode yesterday about Khalil Ware being drafted to the NBA, being drafted to the Miami Heat, or I guess by the Miami Heat. And so if you missed that, be sure you go um, and and watch that, listen to that episode from, from Monday. But Khalil Ware being drafted was awesome. Him being drafted to the Miami Heat was awesome. Him being drafted in the top 15 was awesome. And his former, I guess now former head coach, Mike Woodson, who, by the way, is the former NBA head coach, had some interesting things to say. Listen to this. Quote, uh, Mike Woodson says, look, I told him, you come with a great attitude. You put in the work. You're coachable. You're in a great organization with the Heat president, Pat Riley, at the top. Um, and, and the ownership as well. He said the team and Spo coaching Eric Spolstra goes on to say the sky is the limit for you is what Mike Woodson told Khalil Ware. He says, quote, his skill set is there. I just think he's got to learn the NBA way. He's got to get a little bigger. And I totally agree. I absolutely agree with what Woody is saying here. He's got the mindset for it. He has the basketball IQ for it, especially on the defensive side of the floor. That's where he's going to... I think survive. I think Khalil Ware will make his bread and butter down there on the defensive end while he slowly does get bigger and develop more of the offensive game, which, heck, the other night he put on an offensive showing, right? Game one, he had double-digit points and a ton of blocks. Game two, he just lit it up from um, shooting the ball and and dishing it out to his teammates with a double-double. So he's already proven early on in the summer league that he's got that. I just feel that He feels at home on defense. He feels that he can stop most people in the lane. Now, there are some big boys in the NBA. There's big seven-footers that weigh 30 more pounds than he does, which is why Woody was alluding to, hey, you've got to get a little bigger. He's going to have to put on some weight and some size because it ain't no secret. Khalil Ware, he's a skinny dude. He's fit, but he's skinny. And I think he'll put on some weight, some muscle. And the NBA, they know what they're doing. But a lot of what Mike Woodson was saying here is you're going to a great organization. You're going to the Miami Heat, an organization that historically is just really good at developing players and has seen some of the best players of all time play for that ownership and for Eric Spolster. Like you are going to a place that A, they want you, B, they need you, and C, they're just going to make you better overall. And Mike Woodson says the sky is the limit for Khalil Ware, and I could not agree more. He goes on to say about kind of Khalil Ware and how he thinks he's going to do in the NBA. Um, He says, quote, he's got to get a little more weight on him, I think, for the NBA in the day-to-day grind that they have, Uh, but his skill set is there. He can make threes, but he's got to get better and consistent with doing that, something that I've told you and you and I have talked about a ton here on Locked on Hooters. Woodson goes on to say, but I think the sky's the limit, the way Spo coaches and how he pushes guys to play at a high level. That's what he needs. He couldn't have picked a better organization than Miami. And, you know, you hear you hear these things like uh, this quote here where he says, um, uh, Spo coaches and how he pushes guys to play at a high level. That's what he needs. He being, of course, Khalil Ware. He's the type of guy that, yeah, if you push him, he's going to go. If you ask him to give you more, he will give you whatever you ask of him. And believe me, Eric Spolstra and the entire Miami Heat organization are going to ask you for pretty much everything, pretty much everything that you got. But if you give it to them, it works out. Look at what Miami's done. They've made runs through the playoffs, even – I'm talking past the LeBron James, Dwayne Wade era where they were winning championships 10, 12 years ago. Look at what they're doing in this recent time with what they have with Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero. Like They've got good players, and so if you're clearly aware, you're walking into a pretty decent situation player-wise, coaching-wise, management-wise, organization-wise, and if you're getting those compliments from Mike Woodson and he's giving you his affirmation and reaffirmation that you're going to be okay, you're going to do well, then yeah, you could probably take that to the bank. Now, talks about his size, talks about shooting threes. Yeah, he absolutely has to be able to do that. Something that I told you he needed to be able to do last year in college for Indiana to be good on top of him wanting to make it to the NBA. What did I say to you? One for three. 
Make one of three every time. If you can make one of three from downtown, you're doing your job. You are doing what you need to do for the defense to respect you. He went two for five the other night. Okay, I can live with that. Miami can definitely live with that if you're a big man that can step out and go two for five from downtown. That's what will make Khalil Ware successful. And if he does what they tell him to do, puts on some size, and continues to grow his basketball IQ, as Mike Woodson says, the sky's the limit for Khalil Ware. Big high hopes for Khalil Ware. High praise from Mike Woodson, and I know you're excited about it because I am as well. Really, really um, just can't wait to see what Khalil Ware does at the next level. And, well, this has been an NBA-heavy episode, but isn't it exciting to talk about Indiana at the next level? We've been doing it for a couple of years, even before I got on this show, but now it's just everywhere there it's real and again the pipeline is nowhere near going away i think it will only get bigger only get stronger and all of that can be used to make indiana basketball that much better over the next decade or even more to come using the nba can be one of your best recruiters and one of your best builders of a great college basketball program well, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers. I appreciate you so much, man. I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am because this has been such a fun show, and, and I just love doing Locked on Hoosiers. Be sure if you're on YouTube, all right, like the video, comment down below, click on our logo, subscribe to the channel so you never miss a new episode. Same thing on the audio version. Follow, turn on the little bell. And whatever it is, I don't care what platform you're on, be sure you do that. Reminder, we are always, always, always free wherever you get your podcast. So you'll never have to pay for it, ever. So that's really, what's really cool about the Lockdown Podcast Network. So until tomorrow, we will be back for another episode tomorrow. Be sure to tune in for that. All right, stay safe, Hoosier fans. I'll talk to you later.